Welcome to Sparks Live, the art of Banksy, and MS's first Sparks Live on location. I'm in a building in the centre of London, which is housing a very exciting exhibition by the legendary British artist Banksy. And you viewers are in for a lucky treat because I'm going to be taking you on a sneak peek tour before the exhibition opens live to the public this week. I'll be meeting local producer Sean Sweeney, who will be talking me through some of Banksy's most famous and most loved works. We also have a special Banksy-inspired cocktail for you, which has been made by m &S's spirit, wine and beer guru, Rachel Chatterton. But before that, here's a little competition that we want you all to enter. To enter the competition, post a picture of your cocktail creation using the hashtag SparksLiveBanksy and share on Twitter and Instagram or email SparksLive at MarksAndSpencer.com. We'll pick the best looking cocktail to win at the end of the show. Over to you, Rachel. Thank you, June. I'm Rachel and I arguably have one of the best jobs in the world because I get to create beers, wines and spirits for M&S. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today, uh, sharing a little bit of what we call the M&S magics in the drinks world. After all, for years we've been known for gin in a can, gin in a tin, however you want to talk about it. But today we're going to look at a few new products that have just landed in M&S, including these hard seltzers, and we're going to be using it as an ingredient in the cocktail we'll serve this evening. Often people think cocktails are all about the alcohol, but what actually you need to start by thinking is about the glassware actually. And what's more classic than a martini glass? So I'm going to show you a few glasses these, this, this evening, which I think um, are the essence to creating any cocktail at home you can think of. And this martini glass, the way it's designed is absolutely perfect for the style of drinks you should be serving in it. So if you've got a short drink with no ice, this is absolutely perfect. The stem is going to allow your drink to stay cold, whatever you put in it, without the ice and the actual brim on the glass is perfect, not only to smell the beautiful aromas of the drink, it's gonna let the spirit breathe, and actually, in true Bond fashion, it's the perfect um, finish for any garnish you may choose to put in your drink. Any champagne or beautiful sparkling wine deserves a gorgeous flute. There's nothing quite like that feeling in your hand, and this stem also keeps your drink really, really cold. The brilliant thing about having this very tight neck on a flute is actually it's going to hold those bubbles in, so that carbonation within your champagne is going to last all the way down the drink. And with these M&S ones, we've gone the little extra mile and we've added etching at the bottom, which actually adds a technique which is going to hold your bubbles for even longer, so you can enjoy your drink right till the final sip. Highball. Every kitchen needs a highball because actually you can serve any brilliant drink in it, whether it's um, a long um, pina colada or whether it's just a classic British Pims. This is going to be perfect because it's going to allow you not only to have the room for ice, spirit, but also any mixer of choice. Another classic would be the Charleston Tumbler. I've chosen this one this evening because I love the beautiful etching that you get on this glass. Really classic, but it's going to show off any dark liquid. And if your guest asks you for a drink on the rocks, that'd be the one I'd pick. This one's a bit of climbing the charts and it's becoming a real summer favourite of mine. This beautiful luster glass that's just become available at M&S is brilliant for the gin fanatic in your life. So this might be called a balloon glass, copa glass in Spain. But what's so brilliant about this is this is the really wide rim. Loads of room for ice. It's going to allow you to smell and breathe any, um, any gin or drink you choose, actually. But I love this because I get loads of, loads of ice in there, loads of fruit, and then top it up with tonic for a refreshing gin and tonic. And then finally, this stemless wine glass. People, people are using these in the bar world the world over and it's real modern take on the way we drink, um, drink spirits or wine in fact. And it's the glass I'm going to be using this evening to create the Banksy inspired cocktail. Cocktail making at home doesn't need to be scary, but you can really, really impress your guests by just a few little things. So I thought today we'd just share a couple of my top tips, which just make drinks extra special, whether you're having a party, a barbecue, family Sunday roast. So the first one I'm going to show you is just a classic lemon twill. You can do this with any fruit. So whether it be a lime, whether you have a lemon, but what you want to do is make sure you're picking up really big fruits. Just take your potato peeler, give it a wash if you've done your Sunday roast. And really what you're looking for is just a really lovely long peel. And take that round the lemon as far as you can take it. So it's, you've got a nice piece of lemon to, um, to work with. 
And we're just gonna do a couple of quick things with this knife. So you just need a knife and a board, nothing, nothing crazy. And what we're just gonna do is gonna trim it up. So you've got this jagged edge here. So just clean that right up. Just finish, clean it right up so you get a nice clean rectangle, which is just gonna make your drink extra clean. And then what you do at the top, you're gonna to take a small indent. So to draw a little triangle to take a large indent out there. So you've got it like this. And then you're gonna do the same on the other side. And then all you're gonna do, if you get it wrong, don't worry, you've got plenty more on that lemon. And then you're just gonna give it a good twist, harder than you think. And then you can add this to the highball, into a nice martini glass. And it's just gonna be the perfect finish, I believe, to any little drink. And you're also gonna get the zest all inside there. My top second tip for you is actually using tea. So we've got some beautiful teas at M&S, but in the fruit section. So this is a strawberry and raspberry infusion, but you could use any to your chosen taste. And actually what you could do is brew this for a good 10 to 20 minutes, longer than you'd ever think, using normal boiling water, but then pour it into your ice cube trays and add it to your freezer, maybe the day before your guests arrive. And what it's gonna do is add a brilliant pop of flavor and color to any drink you serve. So these are just some I made earlier, but just beautifully flavored. You could use it for an alcoholic drink or any, or even just add it to sparkling water for that extra pop of color and flavor. And then finally, we've just started selling these beautiful edible flowers. And you can just do these as a garnish, but what I've also liked to do, as it's the summer and perfect way to chill any drink, is actually create them into ice cubes. So just using normal water in any ice cube shape or tray, you can just add these um, flowers and you've got a beautiful garnish drink instantly. No fuss, no bother, and I'm sure your guests will love them. So now onto the main event, we're gonna make the Banksy inspired cocktail. We're gonna use the stemless wine glass we talked about earlier, because it's got lots and lots of room for all these delicious flavors. So what we're gonna start by is by adding frozen raspberries to the bottom of the glass. And the frozen fruit is a brilliant thing to have in the house if you're planning on making cocktails at home, because not only does it add loads and loads of flavor to any drink, but it also instantly chills it. So if you haven't got ice, it's a bit of a sneaky tip actually. So let's put plenty of raspberries in the bottom of the glass. You want a really good quantity. You want that richness of flavor coming through. And then we're gonna use our blackberry and elderflower gin liqueur that's just launched in our stores. Just a little tip. It's got a friend, which is the passion fruit and vanilla, which has a really, really bright summery flavor if you're wanting to try something later on. Perfect over just some tonic water, lemonade, and actually the best thing to do is cut a half frozen passion fruit over the top. But back to Banksy. So we're gonna take a really good quantity of this blackberry and elderflower. What I love so much about this is it's got some real hidden flavor to it. So it's got some rose hip and rosemary in there, which I think in this drink is really gonna bring out those beautiful flavors. So make sure you've covered your raspberries. And then onto our final ingredient, which we mentioned before, which is the hard seltzer. These can be found in our chillers and they are a brilliant midweek or a lighter drink to a traditional um, one of our cocktail cans because they're only four and a half percent ABV, full of sparkling water. And um, this one is our raspberry and rhubarb flavor. But actually tonight we're gonna use it as a mixer, which not many people would think to do, I'm not gonna lie. But I think it's gonna be the perfect finishing touch to this drink. You're gonna want a really good measure. We want a lovely, long, summer, refreshing drink. Just give that a little stir. And then in true Banksy magic style, we're gonna take our pink, pink your drink, which is available as well in our stores, which is dried hibiscus flowers and dried raspberries. So it's all about the raspberries here. And actually in true Banksy style, I'm just gonna throw this right over the drink pops and pops of flavor, just sprinkle away, have a bit of fun. And the brilliant thing about this drink is not only does it make it look beautiful, but the aroma you get from it, as soon as your guests pop their nose on this drink, full of flavor, I can smell blackberry, I can smell elderflower, and of course raspberries and gin. Cheers everybody. So now on to the non-alcoholic cocktail. So if you're not drinking or if your guests aren't, there's no reason you still can't create a beautiful, beautiful cocktail. So another stemless wine glass, 
lots and more frozen raspberries, cover the base. But this time, instead of the gin liqueur, we're gonna use the 0% Botanicals, which is a relatively new product to m and only been out a few months, but I swear it, if I smell this, if I drink this, I struggle to realize it's not gin. Packed full of beautiful juniper, peppercorns, cardamom. Give it another good measure, cover those ra raspberries. They'll be delicious to finish the drink with. And then instead of the hard seltzer, my recommendation is just to use a beautiful red, group, red, red fruit drink. So I've chosen this red grape, pomegranate and black currant juice for this one, because it's gonna pair beautifully with the raspberries. So maybe give it a little bit less than we did with the hard seltzer, just right to there. So it doesn't dilute that beautiful botanics flavor we've got here. And then finally, once again, we need to pink your drink. So throw over these beautiful hibiscus flowers, dried raspberries for a final flurry. Lovely, lots of aromas, really dark, rich flavor. I hope you found a top tip this evening to help make your summer cocktail making extra special. If you've been inspired and want to find out any information about any of the ingredients used, they're all available on our Sparks Live Hub, which can be found at sparkslive.marksandspencer.com. And don't forget to share your cocktails um, for a chance to win our brilliant competition. Hey. Hi, Rachel, how are you? I'm well, thank you, how are you? Well, I'm excited for these cocktails. Cocktail time. May I have a quick try? Absolutely, <laughs> please okay. do. So you've got the non-alcoholic version. Mm. Oh my God, it's delicious. I have to welcome Sean. Sean, you've got to try this. Hi, hi. How Fabulous. are you? I'm very good, yourself? Very, very good. Mm. Mm. That Amazing. Is very nice. Very so, nice. Done. So Rachel, I must introduce to you the wonderful Sean Sweeney. Wonderful to meet you. Hi. He's the local producer of this amazing exhibition. So tell us a little bit more about it. Sure. So the Art of Banksy, which uh, the unauthorised exhibition, which has toured as uh, many cities across the globe, brings together over 70 works of the iconic street artist Banksy. Mm. We also have a large number of bits of ephemera relating to some of his satirical work as well. Um, it's been a bit of a journey to get here, to be yeah. honest with you. We were supposed to be doing this last year in a different venue. And then COVID. And then COVID, yeah. Yep. So we've kind of like been in hibernation for a year now. Um, the one advantage of that has been that we found this most amazing venue in Covent Garden. Yeah. Um, this, this, this was a, a, a thriving restaurant before COVID unfortunately closed down, but it gives us an amazing warehouse space to be able to present the exhibition. Um, I should probably just say before we start, it's important to say that this exhibition is not authorised or curated by Banksy. All these pieces are private pieces. They're, they're oh, pieces that are from private collections. Wow. So they're not pieces that have been ripped off walls as it were. So yeah, yeah we're, we're delighted to be here. And uh, we see this very much as kind of being part of the kind of cultural reopening of London yeah. um, as, as everything opens up this week as, as lockdown begins to ease. Well, I think part of the cultural reopening of London is Rachel's cocktail. Exactly. <laughs> Hospitality <laughs> is very important. Exactly. Well, I think we'll have a quick sip, then it'd be great if you could show Absolutely, me Absolutely, yes. Let's get started. Ooh. Shall we? Shall we? See you, Rachel. See you later. Enjoy. Thank you. So here, of course, we have the iconic Girl with Balloon. Yeah. Um, two versions of this, both in red and pink. Um, in the early noughties, uh, Banksy began to sort of supercharge what Andy Warhol had done in terms of screen printing. Mm. And in the exhibition here, we have a very large selection um, representing many, many different periods and, and many, many different images. The Girl with the Balloon itself, the image first appeared in Waterloo Bridge in 2002. And then we've seen lots of other locations in London. Um, the meaning of this, I, 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 I always think, is it that she's 
letting the balloon go, go? or is it that in she's fact reaching out she's reaching out? reaching for the balloon yeah. exactly. So I, I really love that, and, yeah. and that's very much for the viewer to, 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 to take their interpretation. How many of these did he make at the time? Well, there'll there'd be probably about 150 different different Versions prints. Of. Yes, exactly, exactly. And of course, there's that famous story in 2018 when a version of it was auctioned at Sotheby's. In 2017, there was a poll of Britain's kind of most famous work of art carried out by Samsung, and in fact, this beat both works by Turner and David Hockney and so forth. Uh, and of course, in 2018, that was there was that amazing stunt, I suppose, that happened um, where it was being auctioned and it was sold for, I believe, a version of this was auctioned for 1.4 million, and then tsh, clicker, and of course, it begins to shred. Um, and of course, the shredding stopped towards the end. I think you will probably all remember that very yeah. iconic images. And um, then it was sort of rechristened love in a bin, basically. <laughs> um, the, interestingly enough, the, the buyer of that then, then decided that actually that they were going to keep uh, the work. And there's a suggestion that it might actually be worth more in that shredded form, form yeah. <laughs> rather than we are here. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So should we go and see the next one? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I'll follow you. So here we have a huge piece, which is very Ooh. exciting to have in our exhibition. Um, as the years went on, obviously with Banksy, he got very much involved in working with musical artists as well, mm. such as Blur, Wall of Sounds and so forth. Uh, and in 2010, he produced a documentary um, called Exit Through the Gift Shop. As it transpired, they were actually a band called Exit Through the Gift Shop. So in order to not run into any copyright issues, they, Banksy basically gifted them this painting uh, which is called Brace Yourself, and then um, they then, of course, became Brace Yourself. And the idea was, amazingly, that they would actually use this to perform in front of. Yes. And, and I think the thing with an image like this is it brings up so many different emotions in sure, you, doesn't sure, it? Sure, sure, sure. You know, everybody has a different reaction to something like this. Yeah. It's extraordinary. I, th I think so, and, I th and, I, and as I, said, I think I said before, I think, I think you know, by Banksy not being a public figure, as it were, you know, and his anonymity, which is which is so important. In, in a sense, people can draw their own conclusions to it in a way. I mean, this means something to me, which may be different than it means to anyone else. But yeah. I mean, I find it a very, very powerful image. And, and as I say, delighted to have this here at the centerpiece of the exhibition. And now let's go and have a look at some subversive stunts that Banksy's carried out. Indeed, but before we do that, here's a quick reminder of our competition. The lucky winner will win an overnight London break for two to see the Art of Banksy exhibition with a night stay and breakfast at the Radisson Blue Edwardian Mercer Street Hotel, a boutique haven in the heart of Covent Garden, located just two minutes walk from the exhibition. To enter the competition, post a picture of your cocktail creation with the hashtag SparksLiveBanksy and we'll pick the best looking cocktail. Share on Twitter and Instagram or email us at sparkslive at marksandspencer.com. Just to say, this one's a little bit risque. <laughs> so Sean, you want to talk me through <laughs> yeah. it? So, well, well as, as well as doing his own exhibitions and, and, and all his pieces, Banksy also does some amazing subversive stunts as well. Um, earlier in the exhibition, we have a piece called Peckham Rock, which is where essentially he put a bit of rock into uh, an exhibition at the British Museum. Um, and it sort of sat there for three or four days. And we also have the, 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 the story of the die Face tenors where he printed, uh, I believe about a million quids worth of tenors with pictures of Princess Diana on there. And then he threw them into the crowds at the Reading Festival and Notting Hill Festival. I believe at Reading Festival, they actually then were accepting the <laughs> payment. And here we have Paris Hilton. Um, Paris Hilton has released only one album. I'm sure you'll all be disappointed to know. <laughs> and on hearing on this, um, basically working with, a, with, with one of Banksy's friends, Danger Mouse, they decided. Decided we love. To, yeah. I the <laughs> they decided to essentially punk it. So what they did is they got versions of the, of the CD. They changed a lot of the stuff inside, put a different CD in it. Okay, and then they got shoplifters 
to go into the shops and swap them. And swap them. Yes, <laughs> which I, I have to say I think is brilliant. And well, imagine if you were one of the people that accidentally <laughs> bought the banks. You're laughing now. Well, aren't you would be you? laughing now, but a lot of people, of course, didn't realise it at the time. But I think I think it's also important to say, as much as there are lots of serious things in this exhibition, there's also a lot of funny stuff as and well humor. because it, he's got that subversive sense of humour. Yeah. Totally, and also. It's really symbolic of the time, exactly, isn't it? Exactly. In terms of really, this was the beginning of the oh, reality it, TV. Exactly, project. exactly. Yeah. It was. I mean, in, in, you know, I, I believe Paris Hilton was forty this year, and she's been doing it since she's been. I think it's nearly been twenty years At or least, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. Should we see that? Yeah, sure. And the final piece I'm going to show you today is a version of the iconic flower thrower from an exhibition called Gross Domestic Product. This is a very, very powerful image and it was originally um, painted by Banksy in Bethlehem in 2003 um, and essentially what it's here, it's about a Palestinian and rather than throwing stones, it's throwing flowers. The image first appeared uh, in a large format stenciled in Bethlehem shortly after the construction of the West Bank Wall and essentially the graffiti was made of the 760 kilometer wall which separates um, Palestine from Israel. And what's amazing is the way you get the movement sure, with the three, absolutely, isn't yes, it? Yeah. I mean, the, the, obviously this was a very well established piece before this version of it, but we're very delighted to have this here because I think you just get that extraordinary sense of, of the power of, 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 of running through the whole piece there, yes. Yeah. And juxtaposed with this, the gold frames gold, as gold, well. Yes, exactly, exactly, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Brilliant. So did he create a number of other versions? There are, there are a number of other versions. From this particular stencil? So essentially we have a number of flower throwers within the exhibition. So we've almost come to the end of the pieces that you're showing me. Sure. Um, what are we going to end on? Well, we're just going to go around the corner here and there's a rather cheeky, famous piece which I really like. Oh, we love this. Everyone loves the grannies. <laughs> Everyone always loves the grannies. It always brings a great smile to people's faces. Yeah, what a lovely way for us to end. So obviously a lot has happened over the past sure, year. Yeah. The timing of this is about the cultural reopening of the UK, mm. but we also take a massive responsibility in the fact that for many people this is going to be their first experience of coming to an exhibition um, for probably about 18 months. So what we've been very careful of is to design uh, an exhibition experience that takes into account the need for social distancing. So as you've seen today, we have a single file route all the way around and what have you, that would encourage people to obviously be able to really, really enjoy the art, but also to take into account that the situation as, as, as it is. To be safe. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I, and I believe to create a really fantastic experience. Well, Sean, with all that hard work, I think you, my dear, oh, deserve another drink. Much. Shall we go back to the Absolutely, bar? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Rachel, get this man a drink. Well, <laughs> all ready for you. <laughs> Tell me, how was it? Fabulous. Yes. Fabulous. Honestly, congratulations. Thank you very Sean. much. Thank so you. good. So we've got our usuals. Absolutely. Cheers. 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 Mm. Lovely. Delicious. Okay, so it's now time to announce the winner of the competition. And the lucky winner is... Congratulations, you have won an overnight London break for two to see the Art of Banksy exhibition with a night stay and breakfast at the Radisson Blue Edwardian Mercer Street Hotel, a boutique haven in the heart of Covent Garden, located just two minutes walk from the exhibition. Thank you, Sean, for showing me around the exhibition. You're very, very welcome. It's been great to have you. Thank you. And Rachel, thank you for the drinks. More than welcome. Thank you. Brilliant. And thank you to everyone at home for tuning in for our virtual experience of the Art of Banksy exhibition. Remember, you can find all the information you need and all of the ingredients from today's cocktails at the Sparks Hub. Also, do be sure to check your emails because there are many more Sparks Live events to come. Plus, you can go onto the Sparks Live page at mns.com. Thank you so much for tuning in and look forward to seeing you next time. Good night.